This is a Tyrannus module and after a while the buttons stop working. This one's good. Mostly. This one is the enter button. Which is frustrating to use, to say the least. It clicks, but it doesn't actually work. So we're going to fix it. So, to get this out, those are the screws you remove. Six from the back case. Remove these from those. These pull forwards, these little brown bits, pull them both at the same time. When you do it, if you can, slide the connectors out. These wires, one, two, three, four, five, come out. Then you take the five screws out, these short ones to take the circuit board out, and away you go. And then you've got to remove the buttons. So the screen is normally this way up, so this is the dodgy enter button, which is the one you end up probably using most, I imagine. But it goes and dies first. Anyway. I've got some random old circuit boards. This one's out of an HP printer. Now we're going to take the buttons out of this and then see if they're the same as the ones in this. And if they are, bung them in. They look pretty similar to me. Maybe the depth isn't quite right, but we'll find out. Let's take one out first. I'm sure I've got something that'll fit. So, the one we want is this one. We're going to take our handy dandy thingy, which sucks solder. And the switch comes out. Easy! Let's pull these out. That fell out, brilliant. All right, so bad switch, good switch. Physically, is it the same height? Because if it's not, the buttons will fall inside. Looks about the same height to me. Okay, let's use this then. So, as we saw when I was testing it, the left hand side pins connect to the right hand side pins. So basically we've got to make sure that our new switch does the same thing. It probably does. We can probably work it out by looking at the existing circuit board here. These two pins are joined together on this trace and those two pins are joined together on the other trace. So with the legs on the end It's that way around. If you put it in backwards, obviously it's not going to work. Those two are connected, like that. These two won't be. When you press it, I'm pressing it against the desk, it works. So we've got a switch that apparently works. Fantastic. So, legs on the end. Look at that, it goes in. Brilliant. And then I guess we need a soldering iron. Let's turn this on, heat this up, 
Fortunately, this soldering iron doesn't take too long to heat up, so we're all good here. Um, you probably want to hold the work piece. But I think what I'll do is put a sponge underneath it to hold the component more or less in place. Tap one pin, then press it in. Today I'm using giant solder, Stanol solder, highly recommended. Alright, I haven't got my fan on, but if I turn it on, there'd be no good. And you can see that the switch isn't aligned here, so we're going to press it into the board, reheat that joint, and there we go, it's nicely aligned, and these are good. And we do the opposite corner. Do the same again, press it in. Make sure it's the right way around, same as the other ones, it is. The pins with the ground connection take a bit more heat. As you saw, it took a little bit longer to for the solder to flow. Anyway, here we go. So we've got a switch there now. Alrighty. Seems more consistent than the old switch. And then, if you've got any other ones to do, repeat the process. All right, I suppose I'll do the other ones, just for good measure. All right, let's take some switches out. Just fall straight out, it's great. Mm. Mm. Lovely. Do I have another one of them? In the parts bin. No, I've taken them out already. All right, they're probably floating around somewhere. All right, let's take these out of here. So on my machine over here, I've got the temperature set to 400 for around about. Actually, when I took those off just then, it was uh, cooling down to 250, which is why one of them was a little bit trickier to get out than normal. All right, I'm just going to wait for this to heat up again. So yeah, let's do the same side. That's the one I already did. See it's got the new button in there. We've got two more to do. I'll bring it a bit closer. Now if you haven't got one of these fancy desoldery sucking machines, like what I have here, which needs a bit more on a couple of these. They don't always drop out straight away. This one's being a bit more stubborn. So, once you've done that, you then need to find if any of the pins move around a bit, that one's loose. That 
one's loose. That one's loose. It's this one. So we're just going to wedge him. Handily these switches are on the edge and you can actually get a screwdriver in there. So I'm just going to heat this up with my other soldering iron. And sometimes if you've just got one You can put some more solder on it. And pull him off. See ya. Right, and now we've got solder in that hole, which we've got to remove. Lovely. There we go, solder removed. Old switch, new switches. Let's take the other one out. So, if you haven't got one of these fancy solder machines, desoldering machines, you get some solder wick. And there's probably going to be loads of comments about how I'm doing this all wrong because everyone has their own way of doing things. And the solder that's on these is going to be probably different solder than, than you've got here, which probably melts at a different temperature. So sometimes you find it's easy to stick on some fresh solder to get the old solder off. And if you're using a tip, which is a temperature controlled tip, which, you, which is matched to your solder, then obviously it's not matched to the solder that's going to be on here, so it might not work as well. But basically, dumbass, put a bit of solder on there first. And you see the solder wicking up. And it stinks. And there you can clearly see it didn't work so well as the desoldering machine. Let's put some fresh solder on. That one works a bit better. Use some fresh solder on this. As it is much more of a faff than a desoldering machine. Much more of a faff. So you always want a bit of solder on to start with because the solder helps spread the heat around. More contact area. So you contrast the two different methods, you spend much more time with the solder iron on the circuit board, so you're more likely to damage the traces this way. And if we look in here, we can see that we've not really done a particularly great job of removing those. And that's still a faff. So I'm just going to re-solder these and use the solder sucker, because I don't want to break this. Today is not the day for teaching everybody how to remove things using wick. Not when we're replacing buttons. There. 
This one doesn't want to play ball. Oh wait, there it is. See you later. All right, so we've got two new switches. Switches for my bitches. Put them in the right way around. Don't put them in like this. If you did that, it doesn't actually fit, so you're lucky. But if it did, the switch would be on all the time, and you'd never be able to turn it off. So that would be bad. So don't do that. And just do one leg of each switch. Hit the switch, reheat it and push it into the circuit board. So that it's flat. Then do the other leg. And yes, I know foam's not very good for anti static. There you go. New switches, old switches. Right. Let's find the parts bin. Something here. Now some of these I took out very recently out of another circuit board that was the same. So I'm going to find them. That one's different. There we go. Three matched buttons. I'm just going to do them all. Nuts. You guys will really get a feel for the process. Right, so we did these ones, and then we're going to do these ones. All right, let's see how many of these fall out. Yep. Yep, this one was a bit funny. So I'm going to reflow all of those because none of them are moving. And we're going to try again. Fresh solder often helps. Go. 
goes. See? Bit of fresh solder. Works a treat. Alright, three new switches. One, two, three. And again, these uh, these switches came from like a donor board in 2013 as well. Probably around the same time that the Tyrannus was made. But you'll be able to get those kind of switches anywhere. If I find a suitable supplier of suitable switches, I'll stick them in the video description. No, I did that wrong. <laughs> okay. The switch wasn't flat against the PCB, and I soldered all four. It was fairly flat against it, though, so... It's not the end of the world. Right. The process is... Do one. Then reheat. And press into the board. And then sort of the remaining pins. Starting with the opposite corner is normally better. which I didn't do just then. There you go. Gravy. <laughs> right, so that's that. Then what we're gonna do for good measure is we're gonna get some algae which is, in Spain it's this. And a Q-tip. And because this bottle's crap. Come on, dispenser. There it goes. Get some of this. And then all this crap comes off. Now, you really don't need to do this, but I'm getting. Depends on the flux you're using, really. Some fluxes are, are uh, meant to be cleaned off the circuit board. Others you can leave on there. This one you can leave on, but I'm just getting the worst off. There we go. All right. I suppose we should see if it works now then, eh? So I already did the disassembly off camera, but I'll re do the reassembly on camera. Now, if you get your fingerprints on there, you'll definitely want to get that off. And if you've got your fingerprints on this, you'll definitely want to get that off. So again, get some alcohol. On a Q-tip. And give this a, a little wipe over. Get all the crap off it. Because trust me, that will annoy you if you're anything like me and you've got dust on there. And the alcohol dries off. 
Don't press too hard, otherwise you'll scratch it. And then I'm just using a dry end of the Q-tip now, because I can see there's some smears on there, which I don't want. On the inside of this plastic. Shiny. Shinier than it was before. Great. Right. There we go. Don't get your fingers on it. Thus. One screw in the middle. Back the screws out first before you tighten them up so that they follow the same threads. Very, very important on plastic and wood. Nuts. Unfortunately, these screws aren't magnetic. Screwdriver, rather. So, back out and then go in. Find the same thread. You'd be amazed at how many people don't know how to screw things into plastic. These screws are self-tapping. So they make the thread as you screw them in for the first time. And if you keep doing that, you make lots of threads on the inside of the plastic hole. And then eventually, you'll have a hole that doesn't hold a screw. There we go. So, we've got a screw in there. Buttons still do things. That's good. They feel like they'll work. The height is correct. Alright. Now uh, those switches do need to be a certain way up, so you probably need to check the position, colours of the wires when you take these apart, so you know which way they're going when you plug them, plug them back in. But otherwise, your switches are going to be reversed, and you'll have to take it all apart, and put it all back together again, which you don't want to do. Make sure these are fully seated. There's always one. Make sure your wires aren't caught anywhere. Oh, good. Be nice if that was around the corner there, wouldn't it? A fast guy. Looking at you. One more down here. Alright. Let's get rid of the crap I need. Alright. Pull the little brown bits out if they've closed themselves back up. Make sure you've got plenty of slack on these. Now, these little these little things have like a, a plastic bit that's attached to the top of them. And you can use this to lever it in. But you want to use something soft. The end of your fingernail is nice and soft. So you can see how long that is on this one versus how much is inserted. So the insertion depth is about like this. So this one, I'm not sure if it's all the way in there. does indeed appear to be all the way in. So 
think the plastic is longer on that one, wider. Now, if it's not all the way in, I'm still not 100% sure about this. It'll pull out really easily, but that's not pulling out easily, so it must be in all the way. I think there's there's no consistency between the amount of blue plastic tape sticking out and the insertion depth. This one seems wider. I want to look at it. Yeah, it's super wide. The width of that blue bit. Now you don't want to keep inserting and reinserting these things because they do wear out. They're not meant for multiple insertions. So don't fiddle about with them too much. Anyway, that's that. So then, maybe it's closed up. Making sure you don't trap any wires. going to put two screws in and then stick the battery in and see what happens and then I'll put the other ones in a bit later again find the existing thread so you push down, turn backwards, and then when you hear it go clunk, it'll fall, and you'll feel it fall into the hole a little bit. It'll go into the existing thread. Oh, another handy tip of the day for you here. Under here, this is where I store all my little cables and the pinouts. So if I'm out in the field and need to reflash some firmware on a receiver. I've got all the stuff with me, and I never forget where it is. If you are storing these in here, do make sure that you don't short these out. It is pretty handy. There. There we go. Right, next up, micro SD card. Don't forget to take this out when you're taking it apart, otherwise it doesn't come out as easily. It gets caught. I've still got my existing pack, original pack there, which is doing well. There we go. Now, on the trice. Welcome to OpenTX. Engine off flight mode one. There's switches test. Which of course goes on to the next thing if you press it wrong. So this seems to work very nicely now. That was terrible before. There we go, we fixed it. Brilliant. Yeah, it's much better. Because I was doing this earlier, flashing some XMs, and I was pressing enter, and it wasn't working. You do have to long press on those ones. But yeah, it was really annoying. And now, it seems to be working. Woohoo! Enjoy!